Hello and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and joining me here in the Murrieta Studios is Dr. David Burns. Hi, David. Hi, Fabrice. Dr. David Burns has been a pioneer in the development of cognitive therapy, and he is the creator of the new team therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 20 languages. He is an emeritus adjunct clinical professor of psychiatry at the Stanford University School of Medicine. This is episode 50 of the Feeling Good podcast, and this is the second segment of uh, our live session with Marilyn. And this will be about the agenda setting. And uh, I think um, Matt had uh, some comments about the last session, some uh, loose ends that uh, you wanted to tie up. I just really appreciated David's perspective on how the therapist expectations can influence the outcome and become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Another way of looking at that is that therapists' um, uh, ideas about or expectations of what, what will occur in, in therapy, how long it might take, or the degree to which an individual might recover, um, are, serve as hypnotic suggestions. Um, and and you, just just as you can have a positive suggestion of healing and someone will recover and it'll be rapid and they'll feel real joy, there are also negative suggestions, uh, the, the nocebo effect, where individuals really suffer as a result of suggestions that are made from an authority figure like a therapist. Yeah. So it's important to, be, to as, as therapists, for us to have hope um, that's uh, real and uh, to experience training like this where you see recovery occur rapidly and, uh, and, to, and, to, and, and for that recovery to be profound. Yes, ab absolutely. I gave a lecture in San Francisco at a psychoanalytic symposium, and I was the token cognitive therapist. This was a few <laughs> years back, and they, they had uh, presentations by psychoanalysts, and then you know, for each person gave an hour, and then during my talk, I, I, I talked about the fact that, and I mentioned you too, that we were working to try to get a real high-speed treatment, even to see changes within a single uh, mm -hmm. therapy session. We're actually measuring it at the start and end of session, and the, the audience was very uh, re responsive to that. Did, did I mention this in a previous podcast, or am I repeating myself? I, I don't Go know. Go ahead, repeat yourself. If Doesn't I am, happen. I am. But um, uh, the, the audience was very uh, receptive. I thought they'd be throwing tomatoes at me or something like that, but they, they seemed really intrigued. And then they wrapped it up with a panel discussion with, with each of the uh, four, four speakers. And the woman who sat next to me was some famous woman from San Francisco who has a psychoanalytic institute. And, and then the audience was throwing questions at us, and she leaned over and whispered in my ear that she said, uh, all of my patients have been with me now more than 10 years, and wow. some of them are just beginning to make little tiny steps forward. And she said that uh, kind of proudly, as, as if to say, I have the, the pure gold, and you have the fool's gold. Like right. this idea of rapid recovery is, is, is for jerks or something said, like that. said that with that. a sense of pride. Yeah, yeah, a sense of pride. And again, she, she gives her patients this hypnotic suggestion that we're going to be working together for you know many, many years, 10 years or more, before you'll begin to improve. And then, lo and behold, that's what happens. It's a fantastic business model. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> the, um, uh, one other thought on that is just I, I think it is what, you, what you're doing, David, really is light years ahead of, of other... Uh, therapy, and so it is um, expected that th that it would be met with a lot of skepticism, yeah. scorn, even anger. Um, but it's awkward and uncomfortable when that happens, um, and and it's hard hard to talk about. But you know, in our teaching and in our training for for now ten years, the expectation is that in two two hours of of work together, that we'll see profound improvement in mood. And I feel disappointed if that doesn't happen. Yeah, same here. Yeah. 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 So uh, looking at uh, today's segment on agenda setting, uh, I wanted to kind of point out some of the, the techniques that uh, you guys used uh, during this segment. And, uh, you know, correct me if I got them wrong, but uh, what I noticed is that, uh, David, when you started uh, with that uh, segment, you asked you ask Marilyn what, uh, what it would look like if uh, she were to get what she wanted out of... Uh, if a miracle of, happened. Yeah. So that's the miracle cure, right? Yeah. And so... Um, then and that's also a hypnotic suggestion. 
Uh-huh, yes. Indirect That's hypnosis. Right. Like, yeah. why would I ask, or what miracle would you, or what are you hoping for today if I didn't feel we could produce that miracle? That's right. Um, after that, you move on to the magic button. Yeah. Right? And so the magic button leads to the acid test. Is that more or less? Something like that, yeah. yeah. And, and that leads to positive reframing. Yes. And and then then you you did this uh, entire paradoxical agenda setting where you took each and every emotion that Marilyn had in her uh, daily mood log and looked at the beautiful things that it said about her and also some of the the, the advantages. Yeah. And uh, and you really spent a lot of time on this because by the time you know you finish this uh, agenda setting, you're already halfway through the session. In fact, I could tell just as an observer that Marilyn was already beginning to feel a lot better. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And you hadn't even used any any methods by by then. So, um, um, and and also toward the end, you use the magic dial. Yeah. If you want to say something, what's the difference between the magic button and the magic well, dial? Well, the magic button, you press the magic button, all your negative thoughts and feelings disappear, and you go into an immediate state of euphoria, as opposed to the 100% depression, 100% shame, 100% anxiety, 100% rage, and all of those those things. And uh, I mean, initially ask the patient, would... If we had a magic button here, would, would you press it? Marilyn says, oh, I'd slam that magic button. You know, I, that's what I want. And and then you do the positive reframing and, and show that her negative thoughts and feelings are showing some incredibly beautiful things about her. And this is a shock to the system because our whole mental health system is set up on the premise that depression and anxiety are defects that a person has. And the therapist is going to be the expert who's going to help cure the patient's defects or correct the patient's defects. And this is a completely different point of view that our, the suffering does not result from a chemical imbalance in your brain or some defect in your character or personality, but but from your core values and what is the most beautiful part about you. And the therapist's role then paradoxically becomes to talk the patient into continuing to have the symptoms rather than than trying trying to get rid of them. And when we work with Marilyn, you'll see we come up with a list of 43 beautiful things about her that are revealed by these intense negative uh, thoughts and feelings. Yeah, in fact, when, when you finished, you, you had you know, 43 entries and uh, that kind of put you in a place of, wow, do I really want to, to get rid of all this? Yeah, I don't want to press. Maybe it's know, not yeah. a good idea to press the magic button. And then you resolve that paradox with the magic with the magic dial and say maybe instead of getting rid of like the depression, we could dial it down. And you'll see in this segment, yeah. Marilyn decides to dial it down from 100%, which is the worst depression imaginable, to 45%. But that also is an illusion that we create. It, this is like a deal we've made with Marilyn's subconscious mind and, yeah. and to say, we'll reduce it, all the feelings to these levels that you've chosen, but no further. But then what happens is now, now Marilyn has permission to work with us yeah. because she's in control of where the session is going to go. And then as she begins to work with us in, in, in this section and the method section next, what will happen is her brain will change, and then her goals will be different. And so she may very well decide to reduce that uh, depression much lower than than 45%. Yes. Now, here's something interesting that I I noticed. Marilyn has been studying Team CBT for uh, even longer than I have. And so she's familiar with those techniques and the way this works. And, and yet, when, when presented with, uh, you know, this reframing, more than once, uh, Marilyn was at a loss trying to find the positive aspects of her own, you know, supposed negative emotions. And I noticed that, uh, especially you, David, uh, kind of put forward some uh, ideas about, well, does this show... Uh, what, what did you come up with, for example? Uh, oh, realism, humility, yes, uh, like accountability, uh, desire high to change. Yeah. yeah, and then and then um, as uh, as Marilyn said, oh yes, that's right, it does. Uh, you right away asked, uh, is that true? Usually yes. Is that a good thing? Usually yes. Yeah, um, and is that important? And is that important? Yes. Can you comment on on this uh, way of approaching it? 
especially when, when the patient can't really find that within themselves. It's a Socratic so, method, is that right? Yes, but it's it's more kind of like a, a, a hypnotic thing, and, and Matt will explain that. <laughs> a hypnotic thing, you're, you're helping the patient identify and uh, suggest to themselves, which is the most powerful form of suggestion, uh, what they need to notice, yeah. rather than trying to plant plant that suggestion yeah. yourself and when she comes up with something and i then I, I i i get her to endorse that is that really true about you that you have high standards yeah oh really oh how many degrees do you have oh six mm-hmm. post college degrees right uh, uh is that important to have yeah. high? You, you see so she's yeah. yes yes and then she feels like she's doing a good thing and she's coming up with this good stuff. So then she helps us mine the gold out, out, out of the mine. We're working together as a team. So she feels really reinforced and encouraged while we're doing this, this, this process rather than feeling criticized or belittled or, or put down so we can get into a team and do this together. Yeah. One thing that also I, I noticed is that um, toward the end of the agenda setting, Matt proposed to do something called the externalization of resistance. You remember that? Absolutely, yeah. And and uh, um, in in that, and this is kind of like the the agenda setting version of the externalization of voices, which yeah. we'll, we'll see later. Um, I noticed that at times uh, Marilyn was actually agreeing with the resistance, and so when when that was the case, uh, Matt, when you did that with her, you kind of rolled with it, right? Right. Yeah, I never want to get into a conflict with any, anyone's uh, resistance. That'll only make it worse. Yeah. I'd just go to go with the flow there and see the beauty in the resistance. Um, I think it is very fascinating that the um, a positive reframing of finding the beauty in that individual uh, with that negative feeling or that negative thought is different from the idea of arguing against the advantages or the, the function of the negative thoughts. Um, and so I think there's utility in, still in both of those. Yeah, there are different, tools. very different forms of energy. And, and uh, I think uh, some work really well for some people in a different, and the, the other works better for other people. And so we're still, uh, it's, it's nice to have a very flexible uh, and a vari- variety of methods to address outcome resistance. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, one thing that... And by uh, the way, you use the term outcome resistance, and a lot of the list listeners won't know what that means. What is outcome resistance and what is process resistance? Oh, sure. Outcome resistance is the resistance that an individual experiences to change if it was just as easy as pressing a button. It, it would occur immediately. No effort would be required on their own, they would go from feeling uh, depressed to feeling joyful. Um, and process resistance is the resistance to doing the things that would be required in order to achieve uh, that outcome. Yeah, like the psychotherapy homework. And so an example of outcome resistance for Marilyn is she's 100% angry and enraged that she got cancer when she was expecting a long life and she's never been a smoker and it seems unfair. And so so if we said, okay, now I'm going to show you some techniques and I, I'm going to show you how to make your anger go away, she she might think, hell no, I have every right to be to be angry. I, I'm going to fight the, the therapist. So you have to melt away that kind of a, outcome resistance. And she may also have outcome resistance to making the depression go away. Say, I should be depressed. I, I just got a terminal cancer diagnosis. My life is screwed. I'm screwed. This this is the way I'm, I'm, I'm going to feel, and and that and that's the the biggest development I think in team therapy, or one of them is is these powerful new ways of melting away the patient's resistance before you try to help the patient with 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 tech with methods. Yes, I, I so agree with you. One thing that struck me was uh, one of Marilyn's comments, because you know as I said, Marilyn has been studying this, so she knows. Know what goes uh, into the agenda setting, but as as uh, she was uh, discovering the positive side of her emotions, she said, "This is extremely surprising." Yeah. So my mind is blown. Even though she was still feeling sad, there was this sort of a, of a awakening to yeah. to the the positive aspect. Yeah. And and I'm curious, Marilyn, if you could speak to this, even though you know you kind of knew that as you were uh, experiencing it yourself. Like I said, I, um, I've, I've witnessed David and, and Matt work with other people, 
But being on the receiving end of this um, was very, very different. And I walked in here feeling really depressed, really angry, and you know, kind of holding on to it. And to see the positive aspects of that um, was really a surprise to me and made me realize that, you know, it's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel depressed because it shows X, Y, or Z about me. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said, it was like, you know, get, being able to have more clarity in what I'm going through, even though what I'm going through is obviously not going to change that much. Yeah. I, I like to uh, to compare this to... You know, studying all your life, the taste of mango, its component, what it looks like. and But you won't get it until you actually taste a mango. I agree. Yeah, so it's like that. Mm -hmm. that and that's I, the whole idea of physician heal thyself, that I think doing the personal work is, is crucial. I mean, Matt was one of my first students with this type of therapy. And there was a night when no one else showed up for the group but Matt. Mm -hmm. and uh, and we worked on an issue that had bothered Matt that very day. He was very upset. He'd seen some father treating his son brutally as they were, this little boy, as they were walking into a hospital, and Matt didn't know know what to do, and, and we, we worked it through, and, and, and that was, I think, a, a personally... Uh, a breakthrough and a career changer and and once you've been there and experienced it yourself then you have a much deeper understanding and a, and a much greater power when you work with patients and i think matt has evolved into you know probably i would i mean i'm, I'm just kind of like trump i'm kind of hypomanic but i would say one of the <laughs> you know greatest therapists in in the world maybe one of the greatest therapists who ever lived is this fellow right right here and you you hear you'll hear that you hear what what a beautiful person and, and clinician he is but i don't think you can achieve that, those heights as a therapist where you can have this tremendous rapid healing power unless you've done your own personal work. You also need the other components, the measurement, the testing, the other sure, the empathy yeah. tra training. Yeah. But, uh, but I think that w without that, you're just a technician. Once you've done your own personal work, then you can become a healer. David, that's so true. And I remember that, that day just like it was yesterday. And in particular... Uh, working through a cost benefit analysis with you on all the good things that my guilt said about me, all the good reasons to keep my guilt yeah. and how it suddenly switched in my mind. It was like a switch in my mind from, I, I really need to keep this guilt. It's important as a lesson to learn. It's a, a part of my morality. Um, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to feel good with this boy suffering. And it just switched over to, well, that's not really helping anybody. Yeah. And I was able to let go of that guilt in about two two hours maybe less than two well, hours there's two hours but part of it we went to the oasis and for greasy, burgers greasy hamburgers and, yeah and beer or something <laughs> yeah, after right. so. <laughs> thank you for i feel so grateful for that experience yeah, i'm not sure i would be here uh, yeah. if it weren't for that yeah. yeah well so much for direct experience thank you so much um i'm wondering if you were ready to listen to the agenda setting segment okay yes let's go with it if if a, if a kind of miracle happened here today while we were working with you, would, you know, what kind of miracle would you be hoping for? Um, that I would be able to wake up each morning feeling grateful that I have another day. Um, and to make the most of that day and to make the most of the days that I have left. I think in some ways the cancer diagnosis has been a gift because it really is like cold water was has been thrown on me saying, you know, um, life is short and be grateful for the time that you've, you have and don't, don't waste it. Um, you know, you know, get the, give and receive and do the best best that you possibly can each day and be grateful like when i you know take my dog for a walk i'm grateful to hear the birds or if i uh in a point is bell i'm grateful for, you know to see the water and see other dogs and um so and i'm grateful for the friends that have been you know very supportive and walking with me through this have those things already become uh, more intense for you, to hear the birds, to walk the dog? 
Um, or do these feelings interfere with that? These feelings sometimes interfere because, like, I, you know, I may wake up feeling grateful, and then I go to feeling depressed or angry or ang- very, very anxious. I mean, it's the anxiety is off the Richter scale. Um, it's been hard for me to sit still sometimes, and uh, um, you know, and I'm, you know. I've also been very concerned about how much weight I've lost, but I'm thank God I have an appetite, so I've been eating um, well. But um, that's that's also scary. But um, so I'm hoping that you know, I'm just hoping I uh, I'm hoping I have hope, <laughs> um, and I have, that I have a purpose. Um, uh, suppose we could make these negative thoughts and feelings. Uh, diminish greatly or even uh, disappear completely i can't uh, promise that but is that is that something that you would want yes to, definitely today? definitely and um and i don't mean to make this sound overly cheap or gimmicky but if we had a magic button here and if you press the magic button all these negative thoughts and feelings would immediately disappear and, and instead of depression you'd, you'd feel joy and gratitude and the anxiety would be gone and the, the shame would be gone uh the anger would be gone the hopelessness would would, would would be gone would would you press that magic button yes okay um well uh we, we don't have a magic button but we have some pretty powerful tools but um before we use those tools may, maybe we better ask ourselves if what you might lose if if you were to press that that magic button uh what, what the, the these negative thoughts and feelings might be showing some things about you that are really really quite beautiful and and positive and if you press that magic button and all these negative thoughts and feelings disappear some of those beautiful qualities might disappear at at, at the same time and um let, let's let's just take a look at at um what, what some of these we can look at it from from two perspectives um one would be uh, here's a piece of paper if you want to uh, just call it you know positives if, if if you want just to make it real simple but we could look at these from two different perspectives one perspective is the one I just mentioned, what are the negative thoughts and feelings show about you that's awesome and positive and beautiful? And the other perspective is, are there any advantages or benefits to some of, some of these negative thoughts and, and feelings? Uh, yeah, in fact, you can do like a two, oops, a kind of a two, two column uh, th- thing there. And let, why don't you, uh, take, take a first sh- a shot at it and you can, focus on any one negative feeling at a time or any one ne- negative thought and uh, and then we'll see see what we can do uh, with with that negative uh, f- feeling or or thought and it doesn't make any difference which one we focus on first well i, I think feeling sad um might um indicate that i tend to be very sensitive Okay, is that true? Are you very sensitive? I believe so. Oh, okay, so put that here. The sadness shows that I'm 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 very sensitive. Uh, is that an important quality? That's something I value. Yes. Uh huh. Right. So that that's a neat thing. What are some other good things about the, the sadness? What what else does it reveal about you? That's that's kind of beautiful and. And awesome. Like, what are some really? I mean, it seems odd because you're feeling depressed and down and thinking this is uh, something that's wrong with you. But uh, what what are some really beautiful things about feeling sad and and, and depressed on, on this day? What what does it reveal? It's really positive. What well, I, I also think it. Uh, um, I don't know if this is going to make sense, but I I, t- I think I tend to be have and poignant. I react um, like. If I see a beautiful sunset or if mm-hmm. I see the full right. moon, it, it brings tears to my eyes, yeah. a, a sense of awe. 
well, how, what should, how will, that's right. So how should we put that? What are you putting it down? Sense of awe. Yeah, sense of, uh, sense of, of awe and, uh, and, and passion for life. And, yeah, uh, uh, definitely passion for life. Yeah, uh, uh, and, 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 and uh, appreciation. Yeah, yeah, but passion and, and appreciation. Uh, appreciation for, for 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 life and 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 would it be too corny to say and and for the like kind of the awe and mysteries of life? Yeah, yeah. That the, there was a time I remember uh, Danielle was around. I couldn't find the moon. I was very upset. Yeah, <laughs> where'd the moon, yeah. where'd the moon go? <laughs> right, because I missed the moon. I mean, uh, uh, right. Yeah. And and so if we just to stick just with this one emotion because uh, we're just on the tip of the iceberg right now, but if we were to press the magic button, then you'd be saying, "Oh, I'm dying of cancer, but I'm happy as can be." <laughs> <laughs> to make a joke, but you see what I mean? Yes. <laughs> that so could we also add it's it's appropriate to yes. to, to feel uh, profound sad, sadness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, it makes me feel alive. Y- yes, yes, yeah, uh, but yeah, it makes me feel alive, and, and it makes you alive. Uh, and and if you and if you weren't sad and depressed, you, you you wouldn't be alive. You might be, you know, drunk in a gutter or something. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, is there anything else positive about the, de- the just the depression before we go on to move to all these other categories? Perhaps just the the awareness of all the beauty in life, um, the aware mm. the, the idea yeah. of, of being awake. I think that's what, ah, what yeah. Buddha, Buddha called it. Um, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. R- r- right. By the way, um, one thing that made it easier when Obi died was that uh, sometimes, like when I'd be on a trip or something, uh, I would th- think about him and and. Uh, and uh, I think, oh my gosh, why didn't I spend a little more time with him? He just loves to watch walk down to the mailbox with me. And I better do that when I get home. Mm. It just takes about 10 minutes. But it means so much. And there's this post he would sit on at the <laughs> end of the road. And, and then I'd kind of bat, pat him and he'd look around so so proudly. <laughs> and so then when I get home, I would go and walk down there with him. And once when John was on a hike with me, he actually filmed that. I have a mm. video of, of that. Did he? Yeah. But, um, the, you know, there were so many times when I, you know, when I, I said to him, you know, we don't know how long this is, is going to last. And so we, we really gave him the best... Mm. The, the best that we had, so I didn't have that type of that that type of regret after mm-hmm. he died. I'm, I'll grieve his his loss forever, yeah. and I don't want to get over that. And sometimes, even now, when I hike, I'll uh, you know shout out his name, just knowing you know I know he's not going to show up. Um, but uh, that that awareness, you know, of of, of the beauty of mm-hmm. life uh, and the preciousness, I think. Yeah, at, at the, at the beauty and preciousness, uh, preciousness of, of, of life. Uh, now, how about we can just go through the emo- the emotions one, one by one. What what are some uh, really uh, good benefits of uh, the anxiety? <laughs> Press the magic button, your anxiety will be gone. I can't think of anything positive about the anxiety. This guy's like got something coming out of his mouth. Well, <laughs> as a very anxious person myself, I'm yeah. uh, uh, very familiar with that feeling. And uh, I could make guesses about maybe that anxiety uh, serving a, a, a purpose of keeping you alert on your toes, aware, mm-hmm. looking out for any little... Uh, opening, um, like fighting, fighting the fight against uh, this this illness, and making the most of every moment. Yeah, I think you're right because I think it was the the anxiety that prompted me to get hysterical on the phone with the with the yeah. insurance about the yeah. medication. And so that that you can put over here. Okay. Well, whether it's a positive or an advantage is kind of a hazy distinction, but yeah. You know, so it's, motivator. Keep, it's a yeah, motivator. motivator and keep you on your toes because you need to be kind of alert to different symptoms uh, and vigilant. Uh, so you, we could, would it be too far uh, to say that your anxiety is a form of self-love? 
Like if you had no anxiety, you'd say, oh, I don't care, you know, what happens. Oh, okay. No, no yeah. It, it, it's put it that way, yes, it is a form of self-love. Okay, put, put, put that down. And I think it's also speaks to my love of uh, what's going on, especially in, in the world and the country. I'm anxious about, you know, what's going on in this country um, and what's going on in the world. I, that, I think the anxiety shows compassion. For, shows compassion is one, one of the motivators for me to get really active in social justice issues. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, that's two things. The anxiety shows compassion. Uh, and, and then anxiety motivates me to to get involved in social justice mm-hmm. I- issues although there's not much need for that now that we have Trump protecting <laughs> us and I okay. and I've, I've been told don't get that politics out of your podcast I'll get slammed by probably 10 pe- people for that but I, I don't care as right. the Buddha once said who gives a shit <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> that was spiritual by the way I <laughs> I can relate to that spirituality. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that we got ten things here so far. Let's let's go on down here. I have one other. On, oh yeah. on anxiety mm-hmm. is that it's a kind of a wisdom and an awareness of the real threat here. Oh oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. It shows integrity and honesty and realism. Yeah, that, that, that of course yeah. Rather than denial, mm. All right? Mm-hmm. Anxiety shows w- w- wisdom. Uh, uh, courage to uh, courage to, to to face reality. Yeah, I like that. Hmm, I like Integrity, that too. Intelligence. Take, yeah. Isn't it interesting? Mm-hmm. It's very very interesting. Yeah, I think it's interesting that I you know I'm not sitting home drunk every night. I'm facing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, um, yeah, yeah, yes, we'll put that right here or over here, over here, yeah. Anxiety uh, shows I'm f- f- facing it and not sitting home drunk. I'm not avoiding it or running. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, medicating, self medicating yeah. it, or yeah. avoiding it, yeah. yeah. I just I prefer drunk every night myself. But the yeah, other me one, too. Yeah, more elegant. It's, yeah. it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. It's more true. More more denial, please. Yeah. 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 So, uh, how about this next, Gordy? Uh, guilty, remorseful, bad, ashamed, one hundred percent about the alcohol. What what is what what are some really wonderful things about being profoundly ashamed? What does that show about you? That's beautiful, Marilyn. You're guilty. 100% guilty and 100% bad and 100% ashamed. Why is it highly desirable to be 100% bad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in good company. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You, you are. It politicians, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> um, um, I guess because I, I care about people and I've, I've done... Um, um, inappropriate. My behavior has been inappropriate because of my alcoholism, and, and as a result, I think it's a positive that I feel guilty and remorseful because it shows that I really have, you know, care about what I've done, and I'm willing to own up to it. Put the, put that down. Number thirteen. I, I care about what I've done, and I'm willing. Willing to to own own up, and so could we say, in addition, that the shame shows show, shows that you have a, a a very good value system. Yes, is that a good thing? Yes, it's a very good thing. That, um, a good 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 value, uh, so a good moral compass, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, uh, uh, I guess the other one. Uh, what, what if I'm willing to own up to it, so I'm willing to be accountable. Yes. Is that good? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, d- does it also show high standards? Yes. Okay. Well, it, it, and you is, 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 is that a good thing, your high standards? 
I believe so. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, so, put the, did you put that down? Yeah, high standards, and, and then have have your high standards uh, motivated you to work hard and accomplish a lot? Yes, they have. Uh-huh. Is that a good thing? Yes. Uh huh. So, um, and then did you make it through school? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> How many degrees did you pick up along the way? <laughs> I have a PhD and I have four master's degrees. So that sounds pretty good. So, so put number eighteen, a, a, a lot of accomplishment from from the high from the high standards. Uh-huh. But what what else does your shame uh, and self criticism show show about you? That's really really beautiful. Well, I think when I'm working with people who also feel shame, I think I have a lot of empathy. I hope I have a lot of empathy. Empathy and compassion. Uh-huh. Uh, it's hard to know. what I just make a single list now. I, I don't divide them yeah, up yeah, like that anymore because it's too confusing. But Thank you. Uh, <laughs> they, now, another question. Uh, what, what is your, uh, uh, you're very self-critical and ashamed and 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 you 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 kind of tell yourself that uh, your, your other people are more spiritual and you should be more spiritual and more and, success other people are more successful than uh, I am yeah yeah ex- ex- exactly um, and, and what does that uh, show about you that that's really beautiful I'm at a loss right now. Okay. Well, does it does it show you to be a, a very arrogant, Trumpian type of person, or more on the <laughs> humble side? <laughs> more on the humble side. Uh, so put put that down. Is that a good thing? Yes. Humility, and and is 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 humility a spiritual quality? Yes. So would you add that? So would it be fair to say that when you say you're not sufficiently spiritual, that that itself is a spiritual statement? That's yeah. Yeah, the, the humility. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I never, wow, that's insightful. Yeah, yeah. Is that neat? Um, I have a few others. Huh? I have a few others. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Um, we, I, just as some guesses, sometimes for for me, I, I'm also uh, prone to guilt, and it feels like this is a reminder to me to change. Not only a motivator, but it's like underscoring a lesson. Oh, yeah, a reminder. Would you like to put reminder to change? Reminder to change and to correct a behavior. I like that. Um, so it's a form of oh yeah how I learn and, and grow and improve. Oh, well, that's another one. It's it's a way, way it helps me learn and grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the the guilt and shame. There's all, also sometimes I when I'm feeling we out, call this guilt enhancement therapy. Guilt enhancement, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will help you feel worse. <laughs> I can wear a sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, another aspect sometimes is that, that I I have more of a sense of control that I'm I'm doing something, even if that something is just beating up on myself. Mm. Um, that I, I can I can feel like maybe that's the thing that will change uh, this this scenario for me. Um, so you're saying it shows a desire to change. A desire to change. Um, and a sense of control over the outcome. Does that give you a sense of control? Yeah. yeah. Okay. David, you used to say that if I'm feeling guilty, it's as if I've assumed the role of the judge, the jury, and the executioner as well as the condemned. Mm -hmm. So I've got that part of myself that that feels powerful and in control. I agree. I Um, I totally identify with that. Okay. I even have a sign in my bedroom, you know, Judge, jury, execution. Execution, write that one. And then uh, shame is also a protector, that if I feel ashamed, then that's my reminder not to reveal myself to others. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, you'll hide, so I, hide, yeah. I'll avoid it, yeah. Becoming vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and getting judged. Right. Yeah. And then I also think of guilt as kind of a, a, a willingness to sacrifice. How so? If well, I'm I'm kind of beating up on myself for a greater good. Like the medieval monks, yeah, you know, flagellating, <laughs> wearing the yeah, hair shirts, and the... themselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're feeling um, inferior and defective, one hundred percent. What What are some really awesome things about feeling inferior and defective? 
what does that show about you that's really very positive? I, I'm at a loss again. Well, let me ask you this, this question. Uh, do, do you have some defects? Uh, definitely. <laughs> so would you say that this shows an honesty and integrity? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and and um, also, uh, one that we've mentioned already, uh, 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 it, it, does this show some accountability? Yes. Rather than blaming, I'm not blaming the external circumstances, right? Not blame, blaming, you know, but, 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 but accountable. You're saying I'm defective, I'm, I, I'm inferior. Um, um, and again, this reflects your high standards, but we have that already. Mm -hmm. uh, um, anything else you can think of on this one, Matt? Possibly. Um, one might be a sense of pride or honor in yourself and the, the desire to be better, and not only for yourself, but for the people you care about. Um, and even now, at this, at this time of your life. Mm -hmm. Is that true? That's true. So how, how would you put that, Marilyn? Desire to be of service. Okay, yeah, sure. But also uh, to 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 have a, a good self to serve with. Mm -hmm. Yes, have something to bring to the table. Yeah, and and to have yeah, uh huh, something. Fabrice, are we rattling the papers too much? I can't really tell. Oh, okay. Because I don't have the feedback yet, but um, okay. it'll have to do. Yeah. Um, um, what is uh, great about feeling lonely, alone, and abandoned? Well, it makes me appreciate more when I'm with people, grateful when I'm with people or others. Sh shows a, 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 a great gratefulness and being with, being with others. D does it also show a, a yearning for, for loving, really? Is that a good Def thing? Definitely. Giving. Sometimes when I'm feeling lonely, it's kind of my way of keeping myself company. Mm. It's what again? My way of keeping myself company. Oh, does that make sense? Mm -mm. No, no. Okay. not for me either. It's lame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most of my stuff is. <laughs> uh, and, um... Wait, I have to, I've got to comment on that. I, I, this in the past, um, I remember when I was in college and I would be feeling lonely or um, wanting, you know, whatever. I would go. They had a piano at the basement of the uh, dormitory, and I would go down and and play the piano mm -hmm. as a way of being with myself um, that I really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thanks yeah, for bringing that up. Sure. When's the last time you played the piano? It's been years, unfortunately. My. Uh, my cousin, um, who I haven't seen in years, but they've been in contact with me since my diagnosis, and um, I live. I spent a summer with them when they were living in uh, Connecticut, and they fondly, both of them, were talking about uh, gathering around the piano, and I would play, and they, the whole family would sing. Um, so that, that, that brought up a wonderful, wonderful memory that, that I had with them. Um, but yeah, who are you feeling at this moment? Um, sad. Because I, that was a probably the best summer I've ever had in my entire life, and I really felt um, connected to family in a way I've never felt connected to family before in the past. And I'm really surprised that my two cousins um, have reached out as as much as they have because they both live in New York, um, and I haven't, I can't even remember the last time I saw them. 
the sadness that you're feeling just at this moment, is that a good sadness? It's a grateful sadness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a yearning sadness, too. Yeah. I really like sharing these memories with you. Thanks. Yeah, I feel blessed. In fact, um, sometimes felt that sadness without distorted thoughts accompanying it is is a is the ultimate form of uh, spirituality and a kind of celebration of life. Mm. Mm. We'll, we get to that later. You're feeling some hopelessness and, and despair. I don't know if these words were circled or not, but certainly yeah. some hopelessness. We, we think of hopelessness as, you know, the worst hum, human emotion. But what are some really good things about feeling hopeless? Well, again, it goes back to, it's, I think it's been a motivator to do what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, like, you know, taking my medication and watching my diet and... Um, Okay, let, let, let's let's turn this over because you're running out of space there. So, so the, the the hopelessness, uh, 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 like like the anxiety, uh, the, is motivating. What are some other good things about hopelessness? Beck says, with some accuracy, it's the worst human emotion. This leads people to suicide. Mm -hmm. That you can put up with anything as long as you have hope. Uh, but 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 there are like three or four really positive th things about hope. Oh, okay. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what are some good things about uh, ho hopelessness? Uh, this is a hard one. I, I struggled yeah. with this one myself. When I, could I could I share some some of my thoughts on on what's good about hopelessness? Please. Um, I notice that if sometimes when I'm feeling intense anxiety or intense uh, guilt, I'm feeling feeling really really bad. Hopelessness is almost a relief from that. Like if it really is hopeless, then there's no no, no struggle. That there's nothing to do or nothing I could have done. It actually is hopeless, and so it's it is kind of like uh -huh. a relief from that struggle, from that anxiety, from that worry, from the effort, mm -hmm. um, and it's in a way it's soothing. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And also, um, if you feel hopeless about the cancer, then you can focus on life r rather than mm -hmm. you know try try to defeat to defeat. The, the, this this particular mm. enemy. You're saying it's like if if I feel hopeless, it's 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 kind of like I'm not banging my head against the same yeah. exact point in the it's, wall. It's, yeah, I'm moving on. Kind of like what you were saying in a way. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I, I think also it's like I'm getting up every morning and getting out of bed. You know, fo fo you know, focusing on life. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, would we say that ho hopelessness can protect you from disappointment? Oh, definitely. That, that's a good thing. Could we also say that the, the hopelessness, uh, uh, sh again, uh, sh shows that you, uh, what we've seen already, that you're, you're, you're honest and realistic mm -hmm. and not in denial. Is that a good thing? Yes, Definitely. Turn this over to you for frustration and anger. Okay. Um, I also think hopelessness is a form of humility. Mm. How so? Um, sort of accepting that this, there's a problem bigger than me. Mm. Yes, that's a good point. Marilyn, it says here that you're feeling 100% frustrated, stuck, thwarted, and defeated. And then the, the mind bender is to try to understand why is, why is that a really wonderful thing? What does that say that's wonderful about you? That you're feeling frustrated, stuck, thwarted, and defeated. It, 
the other, the only, <clears throat> excuse me, the only thing I can think of is like reaching out to other people. Like it's the, it's it's a way of uh, uh, saying I'm stuck I, I, and I need need some help. Yeah. Yeah, and and so and that's humble and and that's uh, productive to mm-hmm. be reaching out. Let's yeah, I mean, to me, I, I, sometimes when I feel f- frustrated or hopeless, it's it's a motivator for me sometimes to to pray, even though pray knowing it, somehow it may may work. If that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. To be motivated to pray, to be thinking outside the box, to be looking for any possible uh, way forward. I'm stuck here, and I'm acknowledging that, and I'm looking for some uh, some guidance. Mm-hmm. And doesn't it also show that you haven't given up? Mm-hmm. Is that important? Very important for me. <laughs> that you're sticking up for yourself? Mm-hmm. Trying to. Mm-hmm. Is that a good thing? Yes. Yes. That was the hardest one for me to figure out initially when I was trying to figure out the positive reframing of negative emotions. Yeah, I was drawing a blank there for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but the frustration shows that you're trying to make something happen, that you haven't given up on something. you still got fire in your belly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. right. Which brings us to anger. And, the, and, and here it says you're feeling 100% angry mm-hmm. at this. You're the angriest person in California at this time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm admiring that about you. And I've, I've felt some of that anger and rage uh, too on your behalf. And what does that say that's good about us that we're real angry? For, for me, it's that I really care. Absolutely. The depth Is that of your good? caring. That's very good. Put that down. Anger shows I really care. Mm-hmm. And I want things different. Mm-hmm. So that's another one that I that I want things different. What else does the anger show? This might be whether it's a pro, well. It makes me aware that I'm in my body because I feel the anger in my body more than. The, the depression, the hopelessness. That, that's a new one. Yeah, that's good. I, I can feel the anger mm-hmm. in my body. So it makes me feel alive. Like it's a source of your power. Mm-hmm. The wind in your sails. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Does it give you the courage to fight? Definitely. Again, it goes back to the social justice stuff. Mm-hmm. And it, does it show then that, that you have a good value system? Mm-hmm. That the healthcare system is cruel, screwed up. Yeah, uh, is that good? Yes, to have a good value system. And it even shows your love for other people who are in the same situation. Yeah. You're, not, those... you're not just fighting for yourself. Yeah, I was thinking them. about the people who you probably, you know, don't have the the. Um, intelligence or the the wherewithal the wherewithal to really fight the the health care system to get what they need um so is love for others is that a good thing uh, no compassion mm-hmm. and sticking up for people who can't fight for themselves yeah. as effectively yeah mm-hmm. not only in america but worldwide right yeah So um, now we come to a, a funny kind of place here. You said that you wanted to press this magic button, and, and, and we haven't even started looking at your negative thoughts yet, but we'll do that in just a few minutes. But you want to make all these negative thoughts and feelings disappear, and press the magic button. But at the same time, we have I, my list is 43 things uh that these things show about you that's beautiful and, and awesome. Your compassion, your integrity, your spirituality, your, your humility, your, uh, your, your, your courage, gr- grat- courage, you know, yeah. gratitude for, for, for life, your, 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 your values on and on. Uh, 
your honesty, your um, uh, intelligence, intelligence, uh, your your self love, uh, your love for others, all of these things, your sensitivity, your your being in awe of, of a sunset, or uh, uh, and and. and and so you press the magic button, all of these things will disappear too. You, you, you know, you'll be saying, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm dying of cancer, but I don't really care." You know, I, <laughs> you, do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And may, maybe, maybe we don't want to press that magic button. No, um, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't press it now. Um, so then, what what are we going to do? How are we going to get out of this this paradox? You're suffering terribly, and and yet if, if the suffering disappears, all these beautiful things will disappear. Your suffering is the expression of what's beautiful about you. You know, you when when you were taught in society, you say, "Oh, you're depressed because of your defectiveness," and that's the, the, the there's this chemical imbalance in your brain. We'll fix with pills. Or you had this troubled childhood, and, and of course you did, so, you know, we'll try to fix your defectiveness. But, but here we're, we're saying something that your, your suffering is showing uh, all, all your strengths. So how are we going to resolve this? I think just... Um... Now, this is kind of, I didn't expect all these positives to come out of all this. Um, was it surprising to you? E- extremely surprising. Uh, I'm, I'm, my mind is just blown. My heart, yeah. Just... Tell us a little bit more about that. Which, what are the ones that were the most surprising to you? Or what, what, what are you experiencing right now? Again, I'm still feeling sad. Um, but also... Um, surprised. Um, it says um, the humility, um, and especially when you brought up David that it's a spiritual quality. I mean, I, I've known that, but it's, it seems more real f- to hearing it today. Um, and the guilt, um, the reminder to change or correct my behavior, the opportunity to improve and grow sense of control which I don't having cancer I feel like completely out of control except I can control making sure I do what I'm told to do um, and, st- and sticking up for myself um. my my thought is that this is a, a powerful method in and of yeah. itself yeah and I would even wonder if some of your feelings have changed um, especially feelings maybe of shame or guilt that we, that I guess maybe I often, uh, when I'm upset, there's a part of me that's at war with myself mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I don't feel comfortable with my own feelings and that, uh, seeing, seeing the good aspects of those feelings, the healthy components uh, of the feelings gives, brings me a little relief. Mm-hmm. Fact, yeah, definitely. We, we can even formalize that, uh, right here if you like and, and this with this this goal column suppose instead of the magic button we had a magic dial and and at the end of today's session instead of having zero on all of these emotions we we dial them down to some level that would would be appropriate uh, how how sad would you wish to feel today between zero and a hundred probably 45. Okay, uh, how how anxious would would you want to feel? Twenty. Twenty. How ashamed would you like to feel? Twenty. Um, Twenty. How uh, what's it, defective? Is that the next one? Yeah. Inferior and how Defect. inferior and defective? Uh, Fifteen. F- Fifteen. Lonely, aban- alone, and abandoned. Um, Ten. Ten. Um, how hopeless and despairing. Um, Five, and frustrated, stuck, thwarted, defeated. Um, Five, angry. Um, Twenty. So we want to get them all to a pretty, pretty low level, uh, except for the sadness, which can be kind of a beautiful uh, feeling once we get the distortions out of it. So why don't we 
plan to lower them to to these to these levels, uh, and then uh, remember the techniques we're about to start using now in the, with the uh, methods part are, are pretty powerful, and so it's possible that these are going to some of these might even go lower than, than that. Like you know the shame you want it to go down to twenty, it might go all the way to ten or five or even all the way to zero. And, and if that, but you don't need to worry too much about that because if that should happen, then we can kind of work it back up to 20 before the end of the session. Mm -hmm. So you don't get too, too happy here. <laughs> <laughs> Cocky. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, any comments or questions before we go on? We've gone through the testing uh, part, and we'll test again at the end. We've gone through the empathy phase. We've gone through the kind of paradoxical agenda setting phase. We've gone TEA, and, and then the methods are left. But any, do you want to comment on anyone or any questions or anything you know before we push ahead? Um, this just really surprises me. Um, yeah, it's mind-boggling, um, and it makes me um, feel uh, the one word that's really coming in my head more, most strongly is I, I'm really feeling hopeful and um, and kind of proud. Yeah, isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. Surprising. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> David, if it's all right with you, I, I I see an opportunity to do externalization of resistance, a method where there are some advantages to uh, some of these feelings. And if Marilyn were to talk back to those advantages, it might uh, be a first step in that direction. But you might have other ideas for... Oh, there's so many form. directions we can go. In. Let, 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 let's try that. Let, go for it. Lead, lead the way, and, and then we can choose a thought and put it in a metal recovery circle and mm -hmm. crush it. Sounds good. <laughs> So uh, we have a list of uh, it, uh, good things that these feelings say about you as well as some advantages to having these feelings. And I wondered if you'd be willing to debate with me where we could imagine we're in court and I'm defending these feelings. I'm, I'm going to express to you why I think you need, need to continue to feel 100% guilty or 100% anxious. And you could see if you could talk back to me, see if you can... Uh, defend your feeling better. I might add, out of credit, that this technique of externalization of resistance uh, was created one in a session when I was supervising a psychiatric resident. I don't know if you remember her, Rena Sugarbaker, wasn't that her name? Oh yes, I do remember. And, remember and, and she yeah. said, "Why why don't we do this with with resistance rather than with uh, just negative <laughs> thoughts?" And so we called it externalization of resistance. I, so, I'm glad we can give a, a shout out to Dr. Sugarbaker. Yeah, I, yeah. she was in. Uh, Salt Lake City for a while, and then I think she moved somewhere where else. I, maybe she'll hear this and contact us and say hello. That would be not, that would be lovely. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, could could I play maybe a good reason to keep your anxiety to start with? Mm -hmm. won't, won't that keep you on your on your toes and alert and uh, aware and really be protective and keep you safe? Well, I find the anxiety to be really physically draining, um, and it doesn't keep me alert. It kind of keeps me distracted and um, almost too self-focused. Good. Who won there? I think I, I did. Um, what if I were some, some reasons to keep guilt? You really should should feel ashamed because of your alcoholism and, and your many failures in life. So you don't want to reduce that shame. Your shame shows what a moral person you are. It shows how honest you are. You deserve to suffer. And yeah. To and you deserve to suffer. No, I don't deserve to suffer. I don't think anybody deserves to suffer. Um, but I think the uh, the shame has enabled enabled me to in some instances, hopefully correct what the past um, and my behavior in the past and to be aware as much as I possibly can of my current behavior. Um, so it's making me hopefully be more present in the moment. Um, so you'll keep, keep some guilt. 
So you'll be present in the moment and correcting some uh, errors. So I don't have to if I so I don't have to re-experience yet more guilt. That sounds good. It's actually protective of doing things that would increase your guilt in the future. Right. Okay. De- definitely. That seems like a wise investment. <laughs> um, how, how about inferior feelings? Isn't it good to have high standards? Don't you need to feel inferior? Yeah, I think it's important to feel, um, to have, I mean, yeah, to have high standards. Um, but I think... Um, the inferiority also enables me, I think, to feel humble and to appreciate the um, um, and to be in awe. I think at times of the accomplishments of other people. Mm-hmm. That's and one to, we didn't even add. Yeah. <laughs> Another neat thing to to hang around with people that I admire and um, th- shows that respect ha- for others. Definitely respect for others, and to, and to have what they have, and to work towards that. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Okay. You're using that, that tool very effectively. Thanks. Yeah. I've got great teachers. We could, we could move on. Yeah, I think we the, can. Yeah. yeah. I Good. think Marilyn's got this thing pretty much clobbered. Okay. So that was uh, really a, uh, a mind-opening um, session. Uh, so this was segment uh, number two of the live session with Marilyn. Um Next time we'll do the uh, final segment of the session, the methods part and, uh, and the uh, post-testing. One thing I would like to add before we close this is that uh, we've gotten a lot of um, requests for more live sessions and this takes a lot of work for us. Um, so I would like to ask our listeners in, uh, in return to go to iTunes, leave a review, um, you know, good or bad, it's up to you. But um, uh, pass this on to friends. Send them the link to uh, to the um, podcast or to the website. So we really appreciate your uh, your support. Another way for you to support us would be to send us money. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We, 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 don't need, we don't need to do that right now. <laughs> then we will pray for you. <laughs> Call me Dr. Dollar. (laughs) Come get the Reverend Dollar. (laughs) Fabrice is already imagining the amount of editing he's going to have to do. (laughs) It's okay. You can leave that in, right? For you. No, I'll leave that in, but I'm losing my track of uh, thoughts. (laughs) Thanks to David's uh, humor. Uh, No, what I wanted to say is that please come to the show notes and uh, leave comments and questions. Uh, We take that into account for future podcasts. So thank you, uh, David and Matt and Marilyn, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. My pleasure. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes for this podcast under the blog page, and where you can leave your comments and questions. The website has an abundance of resources for therapists, as well as non-therapists, including books, workshops, a list of online training groups around the world, and much more. Theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donzel. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.